recently we did a video about our five favorite roads to ride in Wales. But that only tells half the story because Wales is also amazing for off-road riding and I love that as much as I love the car. So this video is all about our five favorite off-road riding trails in Wales. We've spread those trails between a bit of South Wales, a bit of Snowdonia, so a bit of Brecon Beacons, a bit of the Snowdonia National Park. Now to do that, we obviously need a bike and as good as that Kawasaki was, yeah, it's not going to cut the mustard when it comes to the dirt. So we've reached to the Yamaha Tenere 700. I'm really excited because it's my first chance to spend a proper amount of time on this bike. It's something I've lusted after ever since those very first kind of concept sketches of the Yamaha T7 came out. It looks absolutely stunning and it rides apparently as well as it looks. Only one way to find that out and that's to get muddy and get stuck in. These videos only happen because of the support and help from our sponsors. Support the companies that support us. Trail number one, Nancy Mock. What I was trying to find here was a trail that's accessible to everyone. Easy, for a given value of easy, easy enough to ride, doesn't require big gnarly off-road tires, doesn't require mods to your bike. You can ride it with a little bit of off-road experience and a little bit of nails on what you're doing, but a super easy, nice, fun starter trail. What that means for me is no ruts, no big muddy puddles, no massive water crossings, and no massive elevation, so no steep ups or downs. This trail is perfect for that. It winds across the moorland, nice hard gravel base. During winter, millions of puddles to splash through, but nothing with a soft muddy bottom in it. So it's a nice flowy, super fun adventure bike trail. A little rough in places, but nothing too bad. And again, this trail, you can pick your speed. If you ride it slow, it's a pretty simple, pretty simple trail. Ride it fast, suddenly, becomes pretty interesting. Unlike riding on the road in the UK, riding off road on trails is something that's under threat, something that's not to be taken for granted. The trails we use in this video are a mixture of byways and unclassified roads, both which are completely road legal. They're classed as an actual road, so you still need tax, still need insurance and a license, and we've every right to be here. Unfortunately, the nature of the world is that in the UK, there are people who'd like cars and motorcycles not to be on these trails. Sometimes that's purely out of childish grumpiness, and sometimes they've got good reason. Usually they've been razzed past, sprayed with mud, or they've seen cars and bikes straying off the trails and tearing up the countryside. Even here, there's plenty of examples where people haven't stuck to the legal trail, and it does look a mess, and that's to me, and I love cars and bikes. So here's the thing, if you're gonna start doing some off-roading in the UK, there's a couple of basic rules to stick to. One, stick to the trails and treat everyone else with respect. If you come across a walker, a cyclist, a horse rider, give them a bit of room, stop and have a chat, take your helmet. It sounds childish, but be a good ambassador for motorcycling. Don't razz past and leave them hating us and joining the lobby to get bikes and cars off the trails. Second rule, make sure you know where you're going. Now these trails are marked on maps. Some of them are temporarily closed. You need to respect that. But if you're not sure which trails are legal and which ones to use, rather than guessing, join your local TRF. TRF is the Trail Riders Fellowship. It's a, a company, a, a collective of riders and drivers across the UK who work to keep the lanes open, fight for our right to ride off road, and more often than that, they know where the good trails are. Join one of your local groups, get the idea from them, get an understanding for them, and you'll find yourself in much less trouble out on the trails. It feels ridiculous that I'm even having to have this conversation. If you go to Portugal, if you go to places in America, it's pretty clear. The trails are there, go and use and enjoy them and respect everyone. Unfortunately, on our crowded little island, a little bit more respect is needed and we need to be good ambassadors for motorcycles off-road if we want to keep using these trails for another generation. Next, we're talking about fun adventure bike tracks. This one is probably on the, on the harder end of fun. It needs a little bit of skill before it becomes fun. Otherwise, it's, it's a bit of an ordeal. But this is again by Nantamok Reservoir. It's one of my favorite types of trail, exposed bedrock. So there's no real dirt or ground. It's just open rocks and you're riding with the contours of the land. There's something about that that I find really enjoyable. You've got to pick your line. You've got to be really sharp about where you put your wheels. It's just about the right difficulty to be really enjoyable if you're a competent off-road rider 
on an adventure bike. Especially something like the Tenere, which is a little more off-road biased. We've got some decent knobby tires today, so it's actually a properly enjoyable trail. In and out of the gullies, picking your line, the climbs can be quite tricky, but pick your line along and it's a really enjoyable trail. If you hit it in the wet, be careful. The rock is double stiff. This is my favorite type of trail. Pretty much all hard exposed rock. Bits you can make jumps out of. Bits you can make little steps out of. Really enjoyable. It's a little bit slippery when it's wet. It's a bit damp today, so it takes a bit of finesse. But a super enjoyable trail and just about the right difficulty to be fun on an adventure bike. Get a bit of training before you come off-road on an adventure bike. But if you're just a bit steady on an adventure bike, you can get along this stuff. It just takes a bit more time. You can go slow, pick your lines, and just work your way along gently, use a bit of clutch control. You'll find your way to the other end. And then as your riding and confidence grows, you can have a bit of flow along here. It just becomes a yeah, super enjoyable trail. Puddles! <laughs> this is basically like an extension of being five years old and having Wellingtons. So this is another trail sort of north of Talithlin, south of Barmouth. Um, it's normally an absolutely beautiful place to ride a motorcycle. Today, it's, there's no sunshine in your eyes. That's a good thing. This is a really good typical, typical Welsh byway, really. Sunken road, sat down from the moorland around it, and that means tons and tons of big puddles. The good thing about these typical sunken road ones, they tend not to be soft in the bottom of the puddles. So they look daunting, but you can usually get through. Some of them need a bit of wading depth, but it's not too bad at all. Best of all, once you've run through it a couple of times and found out where the holes and where the obstacles are, you can charge through and make a massive tidal wave of water, which is really satisfying. Look, I can see the sea. I promise you it's there. It's definitely there. One of the greatest things I think about trail riding in Wales and actually in particular Snowdonia and, and mid Wales upwards is the views. You know, these are really remote locations. The trails are quite often the old roads, some of the old drovers paths and stuff that go over the tops of the hills where no tarmac road goes and that gets you to some incredible sights. Yeah, when the weather plays ball, you can come around a corner and just get beautiful vistas coming out in front of you. It's absolutely, you, you can't just ride looking at the trail the whole time. You've got to make the most of the views here. It's properly stunning. So now this trail is the trail I've picked for my favorite scenic trail. It's a little bit of a twisted category, this one, because pretty much every trail you ride in Wales tends to be pretty beautiful. This one for me is a personal favorite for a couple of reasons. One, it's got the two reservoirs and the mountains in it. So you've got the two parts really of Usk Reservoir over there. And then you've got Llyn and Llyn reservoirs and mountains up in the back. Absolutely stunning ridge line. It's just a really beautiful place to be and just chill out and ride a motorcycle. The trail's super fun, super flowing. A couple of water crossings, a little bit of a rocky climb, but nothing really that gnarly, which just makes it a really accessible, fun place to ride an adventure bike. Now, the other reason I love this trail is because just at that end, you follow it into Tricastle, a little bit further on, there's Senny Bridge, there's the old temp fish bar. So you can get fish and chips from there, stuff them in your jacket, blast back up here and sit eating your fish and chips, watching the sun go down over the back of a reservoir. And that is like the ultimate Chris date night for me and my bike. <laughs> this is the Roman road that heads from Tricastle. It actually heads eventually towards uh, Sundavery direction, Madurai in the Brecon Beacons, but it's not stupidly technical, so it's reasonably rideable on kind of all adventure bikes. A few road bikes too, if you feel adventurous. Good fun to ride, but look at that. Halfway along, that view, that's the Usk Reservoir over there. You've got Slinnevan Vach and Slinnevan Var over there. Two ridges with reservoirs on them. That is the Brecon because that's the Black Mountains. It's absolutely glorious. This for me is a real good test on the Tenere. Riding in conditions like this today where it's cold, it's icy, because 
when manufacturers launch these adventure bikes, they're normally quite clever to launch them places like Morocco and Portugal and places where you can get some really gnarly terrain, but in general it's very grippy. Grippy and open and flowing. And actually, for us in the UK, most of our riding is not grippy. <laughs> and it's definitely not open. It's tight, slippery little tracks and trails. And that's where an adventure bike really shows through as being something that most people can take off-road. That's always the point. It needs to be accessible. It needs to be rideable. And so far the Tenere is doing very well. So along with us on, on a few of the trails we rode in Snowdonia was Rowan Jones. He's uh, one of the kind of main guys at the Yamaha Off-Road Experience. It's the Grant Jones Yamaha Off-Road School. It's in Mid Wales and in Llanidloes. Um, they, the guys that lent us the off-road prepped Tenere's. So we've got knobbly tires, got Dunlop off-road tires on them. Um, Yamaha's big bash guard and bodywork protection bars, just to give them a little bit more traction and a little bit more protection off-road. The Yamaha Off-Road School is one of the longest standing off-road schools in the UK. Um, they do everything from little trail bikes, complete novices on bikes, through to sort of off-road training and enduro, enduro training. And they do the Tenere experience where you can do like a one, two, three or four day experience with them. Bit of coaching is ideal if you've never ridden off-road before. It's a perfect way to sort of get in, try a Tenere, they'll teach you how to ride it off-road and then take you on some of the beautiful trails near their site in Tenere. So yeah, massive thanks to those guys for sorting the, the off-road prep bikes out for us. And uh, yeah, for giving us a little, little extra set of wheels to chase along the trails too. Right, now's the time for sweating, crying, <laughs> wanting to give up motorcycling altogether. I wanted to put one trail in that's a, a gnarly trail, a proper challenge. Um, probably not great fun for most people on an adventure bike. And in all honesty, only great fun if you like getting stuck and being pulled up hills by your mates. We actually had two trails in mind for this. We shot one with Rowan Jones in Snowdonia, which was ridiculously hard. Big boulders, big slabs. The pair of us had a couple of drops. We had some real slog to get up it. It's the sort of place you never ever see an adventure bike. T7 did a damn good job of going up there. The only snag with that trail is if you got it wrong, if you charged in a bit quick or if you did have a big drop, it was really, really harsh on the bikes. It was really easy to have been smashing the foot pegs, smashing gear levers and brake levers. So although it was a really good challenge, it required quite a lot of finesse not to do damage to your bike. So for that reason, I've switched to this one, which is just near Cray in the Brecon Beacons. It's a real short trail, not that many ones near it. So there's a bit of a slog out to it, but it's got a nice leafy gully at the bottom, flowing, a few rocks, little root step in it, which Sometimes you have to be careful if you try and jump it. You'll see why. Then as it goes around the corner, up to the top, it becomes a proper rocky gully. Down on an adventure bike, good fun, pick your way down gently. Up on an adventure bike, I'll tell you in a minute. Tricky, rocky, slippery and challenging. So this is the hard one. It's got a real slippery, muddy section here at the bottom. But what you can't see under all these leaves is just rock. So it kicks constantly kicking you off balance, throwing the bike side to side. It's a real challenge. There's a big root step here, followed immediately by another root, which is again, <laughs> really easy to get caught out on. And just when you think, right, that was hard, Chris, I believe you. It goes round the corner and gets worse. <laughs> so from here up, loose, big rocks, and then a big old slab right at the top. Just got to try and keep a bit of momentum, keep the bike moving. Duck the gate. Woo! and she's up. I'm beginning to figure out how this Tenere works as well. It definitely likes a bit of momentum. It doesn't like to be trials and plodded up stuff. 
it wants you to carry a bit of pace, hit things, use the suspension travel. It's got good suspension travel. It's pretty well controlled. I know a few people have criticised the fork for being a bit soft, but on the whole, for an adventure bike, it's very well controlled on here. You just got to keep it rolling. This is Colburn Forestry. This trail is my pick for the kind of nice, easy, chilled out forestry road. It's a big, flat, well-maintained forestry fire road. If you've never been off-road before and you want to get some mud on your adventure bike, this is probably the place to come. Yeah, even on a road tyre, it works really well down here. It gets a little bit potholy at times. You can always ride around them. Or if you've got a bike with plenty of suspension travel like the T7, it rattles through those nicely. What I like about Colburn Forestry is this trail is easy for anyone to have a go on don't need to be on some full-on mega adventure bike with knobbly tires and you can make it part of a really nice sort of small single track roads loop so at the far end of the forestry from colbren you follow the single track road and you end up on one of my favorite single track mountain roads up through astrofeld so it's a great way to make a nice little loop and include a little bit of gravel on the ride so that's it that concludes our guide to bike world's favorite trails to ride in Wales. I've got to say I've had an absolute blast filming this feature. As much fun as we had the other week doing the roads one. Off-road something that has always been a massive passion of mine. Whenever I could I'd always get out and trail ride. I had a Honda Dominator for years that was battered and I used to ride every green lane I could possibly find on it. In between racing it was a really nice way for me to just chill out. I think the thing I love about trail riding is there's no pressure to go fast. It's not the place to be going fast. You can make your own challenges just out of how difficult the hills are to climb. And if you find the trails too easy, buy a bigger and heavier bike. <laughs> it makes everything harder and gives you that entertainment factor back. It's also one of the places where when you're out riding on public ground, public roads, there's no penalty for crashing. It's not like crashing on the road. If you crash on the road, it's usually a fairly decent drama. There's usually things to hit, people to hit, insurance to deal with. Dropping one of these on a muddy lane, par for the course. And I like the how relaxed riding is when you know you can just tip off the bike sideways, pick it up and carry on. I don't know why, maybe I'm a bit sadistic, but that puts a smile on my face. The Tenere 700 we've used for all this has absolutely lapped it up. It's definitely an adventure bike that sits at the off-road end of the scale. This is kind of as far removed from a full-on Ducati Multistrada GT type bike as you can get. This one does go on the road. It's actually pretty comfy to cruise along at 60, 70 mile an hour. Decent wind protection. Got to work a little bit harder on the engine than you do on the bigger capacity adventure bikes. But what this thing loves to do is charge down fire roads and rough tracks. A few things I've loved about the Tenere. One is the looks. Looks are a personal thing, but for me, this is the best looking adventure bike out there. I absolutely adore it. And it's a bike that every time I walk past, I kind of sit and stare at and want to go and ride it. Second thing I really like about it is the fact that they've kept it simple and kept the price really sensible. And that's shown in the number of people that are buying these and using them kind of solely for off-road riding. The fact that the manufacturer like Yamaha has built an adventure bike that is really geared towards off-road and doesn't cost a fortune, it's not covered in fancy electronics, I've got a lot of time for that and I think that's probably one of the best selling features of the Tenere. The way this bike likes to be ridden, it took me a bit of getting my head round. I'm a bit more of a trialsy off-road rider. I like to plod up things slowly, feel for grip, and then fire up the steps as they come. The Tenere didn't seem to respond so well to that, and that's where I had quite a few of my topples today. The Tenere seems to like rattling through stuff with a bit of speed. It's a bit more of an enduro rider's bike. Watching the footage of Rowan Jones from the Yamaha Off-Road School riding this, he doesn't stop and start at all. He keeps the thing moving and uses the big travel, uses the big 21 inch front wheel and rides through with a bit of pace and keeps the bike going, keeps the momentum flowing. When I switched my riding to ride like that, suddenly it responded a lot better. It's a bike that is absolutely brilliant fun once you're up in second and third gear. One thing that I didn't like was a little bit heavy and dull on the controls. It's got a little bit of a road bike feel. The clutch is fairly heavy. It's a big fat clutch lever. The front brake lever is fairly heavy. It's a big fat front brake lever, which is pretty normal in road bike world. But for an off-road bike, if you ride an enduro bike, they have really light, dainty levers. They're really nice and tactile and easy to use. Again, hate to make the comparison here, but KTM's 890 and 790 does that a lot better than this. You pay a fair premium on them bikes over this, so it swings and roundabouts, but that was one area. The levers and the handlebar grips I felt could be a bit more off-road orientated and it's probably the first thing I'd change if I bought one. The only other thing I'm going to pick on the Tenere for is it's a little bit tall and top heavy. Now 
once you're rolling, once you're flowing, it doesn't matter at all. But for nervous riders, their first off-road steps on a typical muddy British green lane, it can knock your confidence a little bit. It's, it's quite a long way to the ground, so if you're shorter in the leg and you get off balance, it's quite hard to keep it upright. My advice, decent set of handguards, stick the engine crash protection bars on and accept that you're going to drop it a couple of times. Try not to be too bothered about that and you'll end up having a fantastic time riding the Tenere off-road. Now, if you don't want to take my word for it, you shouldn't. Have a chat with the guys at Yamaha's Off-Road Experience. They've got one, two, three, and four day courses. They can cater for everyone from complete off-road novices through to, well, those guys themselves are international six day enduro gold medal winners. So they've got a fairly broad spread of abilities they can cope with. And it's a chance to go and try a Tenere 700 off-road on some of the trails we've shown and have a bit of fun on one yourself. We talk a lot about what bikes we use off-road and you know what, the temp is an incredibly capable thing. It can go some gnarly, gnarly places. You don't need a full on motocross setup with big knobbly tires. You can ride a lot of these trails on, on a bike on road tires. In fact, Bike World Director Al proved this by taking the trusty transit to all sorts of stupid places throughout the shoot. It became a bit of a mission of his. Every time I said, you better park the van there, he'd stubbornly lock the doors and drive as far down as he could. So we've got some brilliant shots of the transit in situations it should never have been in. But yeah, fair play to Al and the transit. Everything we did on the Tenere, the transit had a crack at too. So if anyone wants a cheap transit, just give us a buzz. Finally, I just want to finish up. I know I gave you all a little bit of a teensy weensy lecture earlier, but it really is important with trail riding in the UK to treat the trails and treat the other trail users with maximum respect. It's something that as long as I've been riding bikes has been contentious, has been under debate as to whether we should be allowed motor vehicles on off-road trails or not. Obviously, I think we should be able to. It's we should all be able to share them. But the thing that makes those arguments lots easier is when we as motorcyclists and 4x4 drivers respect the trail, don't carve big holes in them, don't roost off the edge of the trails and destroy the land around it, and stop and say hi to everyone else you see on the trails. It sounds simple, but that stuff makes it much easier to fight the case for motor vehicles on trails than when you go past wide open and fill the walkers in with a big rooster tail of mud. That doesn't, that doesn't help. That's what enduro racing is for. So lecture over, but Go and enjoy some trails. If you've never given off-road a go, get along to one of the schools, give it a crack. Even if you hate it, at least you've tried it and then you can send me a message and say, I hate you, you made me muddy and sad. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed some of our trails and we'll see you again on Bike World.